What if Padme was assassinated in Attack the Clones? That's our story for today and you gotta wonder, will Anakin be alright with this? Spoiler, probably not so much. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, I liked writing it, hope you guys like listening, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on Coruscant, as bounty hunter Jango Fett and Zam Wessel are trying to execute Senator Padme Amidala. This was a bounty from Dooku himself, as Jango has become Dooku's go-to bounty hunter. And as Zam sends her droids with the assassin bugs to Padme's apartment, Jango follows them. Dooku wants Padme dead, so she cannot lead a vote against the creation of an army for the Republic. And as the droids go through the air, Jango tracks them through Coruscant. And after a while, Jango is now perched above Padme's apartment, watching the droids put the bugs through the window. And Jango was able to see into the other window, as two Jedi were seemingly in a bit of an argument of sorts. Jango had a lot of experience with Jedi. He'd killed a few of them. He thought that they might be able to sense the bugs crawling in Padme's room. So Jango lifted his rifle, then fired a precise blast at a window a few levels up. This could be heard by the two Jedi, and Jango watched as they ran away from Padme, thinking that someone was breaking in. As Anakin and Obi-Wan ran, Anakin was determined to protect Padme. He was so glad to be back with her. He thought of her every single day, and he wanted to show now that he could protect her. But when they reached the next level of the apartments, all they found was a broken window. Obi-Wan and Anakin at the same time said this was a distraction, and so they ran back down towards her room. As they approached Padme's door, they heard a quick scream, and then silence. The door swung open, and Anakin saw two assassin bugs crawling back to the window. He cut them down, but the droid that they were crawling to flew away. And Anakin turned to the bed to see Obi-Wan feeling Padme for a pulse. Then he looked up to Anakin and shook his head softly. Her security members now ran into the door and told the Jedi to move. They grabbed Padme, rushing her to a hospital, but the Jedi knew the truth. It was too late. Now Anakin stood here completely numb. He'd failed. Padme, the woman he loved deep down, died under his watch. Obi-Wan came over to him and was trying to calm Anakin down, but his ears were ringing. He felt like he was going to faint. He brushed Obi-Wan away then ran up to the roof of the building, standing and overlooking Coruscant. He wanted to find the person who did this. He couldn't see any sign of the droid, though. He needed to find who did this. And in this moment, Anakin swore to himself he would stop at nothing to avenge Padme. After a bit, he re-entered Padme's apartment and secretly grabbed one of the assassin bugs before the evidence team could take them away. Then he went back to the temple, and over the next few days, Anakin would keep to himself, and Obi-Wan would inform the Council of what happened, while also telling them that Anakin is in a terrible state. While the death of Padme was a tragedy, the Council wondered if this loss would help Anakin how to deal with his own fear of loss. It would not. Padme's funeral would be held that evening on Naboo, and Anakin would attend with Obi-Wan and a few other Jedi. He had his robe over his head the entire time, and he watched with extreme sadness as Padme was lowered into her tomb. Anakin felt horrible, and he knew he would never have closure until everyone involved with this plot is dealt with, once and for all. So once the funeral was ended, Anakin was walking back to the Jedi transport when he told Obi-Wan that he just wanted to go speak to Padme's family very quickly. And so, Anakin would disperse from the Jedi, and he didn't actually go to Padme's family. Instead, Anakin went to the nearby shipyard where N1 Naboo Royal Starships were docked and Anakin discreetly got into one, hardwired the controls, and took off into the sky. From the Jedi transport, Obi-Wan watched this ship go, and he somehow knew it was Anakin. So with a disappointed, sad sigh, he told the rest of the Jedi that Anakin wouldn't be coming back to them today. Instead, Anakin would fly to Tatooine to save his mother. He'd failed to save Padme, but he would not let the same thing happen to his mother. Plus, on Tatooine, there were people who could tell him where these assassin bugs come from. So Anakin would soon land back on his home planet. The sand under his feet, the dry heat on his skin, and the suns in his eyes did not bring him fond memories. He hated this place, but he had to be here. He would find Watto, then travel to find the Lars family, learning that his mother was captured by Tuscans. So Anakin would travel alone through the Dune Sea, without sleep, food, or water, for as long as it would take. And finally, Anakin would find the Tuscan camp, and he snuck through one of the huts to find his mother alive. If Anakin took even one more day, she may not have made it. 
But today, Shmi looked up at Anakin and smiled, holding his face. Anakin smiled back for the first time since Padme died, and he said they were going to get out of here. So Anakin closed his eyes, using the force to cause a rock slide on a nearby cliff. This would distract the Tuskens, and Anakin would run with Shmi to get out of here. As they escaped, Shmi would go unconscious, and Anakin would return her to the family. It didn't look like she would be waking up anytime soon, but the family was very thankful for Anakin. He said that he would be back someday, then took off back through Tatooine, this time going to Jabba's palace. He would know where the bugs came from, and perhaps who killed Padme. Once Anakin reached the palace, two Gamorrean guards tried to stop him, but Anakin choked them with the force as he walked through. He continued on until Jabba's aide stopped him. Anakin said he must speak with Jabba, using a mind trick, and Bib Fortuna escorted Anakin to Jabba. The Jedi and the Hutt clan weren't exactly on great terms, but they didn't really have any quarreling either. The Jedi stayed out of the Outer Rim for the most part, and Jabba appreciated this. So when Anakin asked where these assassin bugs came from, Jabba had no issue providing an answer. He was smart enough to know that an angry Jedi could do a lot of damage. So he told Anakin this was a Kuhan bug, originating from the jungle world of Indumato. And so, Anakin had his next location, as he jumped to hyperspace for his next steps in this trail. From his quick research before takeoff, Anakin would learn that Indumato is a home to a few bars, with one of them being a main hub for bounty hunters across the galaxy. Perhaps the bounty hunter that killed Padme got the bugs from here. And so after a long while, Anakin would make his way through the jungle planet, finding this bounty hunter bar. As he entered, all eyes turned to him, and they didn't even get Jedi around here very often. Anakin tried to wave them away, but all of the hunters were very wary of him. So Anakin took the opportunity, holding up the assassin bug, asking if anyone knows anything about this. And it went about as expected, with no one speaking up. Bounty hunters weren't going to rat each other out for a Jedi. At least, not without a very large profit. Anakin would take a seat at the bar, and he would instead decide to listen in on conversations, seeing if he can learn anything. He got a drink, and he listened, but didn't learn much. It was frustrating, but as Anakin was considering new ideas to track down Padme's killer, someone called out to him. Anakin looked over to see a Duros, blue skin, red eyes, and a hat that could cover his whole face. The hunter called Anakin over, and told Anakin he might just have an answer for him. The hunter introduced himself as Cad Bane, and Bane said he was given a bounty mission on Jango Fett. One of the leaders of the crime families was unhappy with Jango building up wealth with deals with some mystery clients, and so Cad Bane was assigned with taking out Jango before he and this mystery client become a true threat to the bounty hunting business as a whole. Bane was hesitant though. Jango was the best of the best, and he was also a friend. But Bane said that with a Jedi helping him, the mission may not be so difficult. Anakin asked why he would help, and Bane told him that Jango is the one that carried out the order to kill the senator. Anakin's eyes went wide, and so he asked Bane what they need to do, or if he even knows who hired Jango. But Bane did not. Bane would first tell Anakin that the profit of this mission was all his, and Anakin didn't care. He just wanted this bounty hunter dead, and so Bane laid out what he knew. Fett's location has been relatively unknown for the last 10 years, but everyone tracking him down has tracked his hyperspace jumps to all correlate to a similar area. It was a hidden planet, home to a group of cloners called Kamino, and only he had all of the information, pinpointing him to Kamino. And so the two of them would take off for Kamino, with full intent to kill Jango. Anakin would get his revenge, Bane would get a huge profit and reputation from the top of the bounty hunting food chains. On Kamino though, Jango Fett would be in his personal quarters with Boba when he saw the two ships land on a platform outside of the facilities. One of them, a Naboo fighter, and the other Jango knew belonged to Cad Bane. So Jango ordered Boba to get to the ship and come pick him up. He will distract the two hunters coming for them. Anakin and Bane got out of their ships and began running towards the facility doors to get out of the pouring rain. But as they got close, the door was sealed with a heavy blast door and from underneath the platforms, Jango flew up, firing a missile down at them. Anakin barely managed to grab it with the force, throwing the missile down into the water before igniting his lightsaber. Bane flew into the air on his rocket boots, firing his twin pistols at Jango, and the two of them flew through the air at each other, slamming into each other, being tackled back down to the platform. The rain soaked all three of them, 
and as Django rolled away, Anakin flipped and swung down at him, but Django shot a cable across Anakin's wrist and his saber rolled away. So instead, Anakin now used the cable to pull Django, then kicked him in the face. It hurt because of the helmet, and Django recovered to block blaster shots from Cad Bane, then fired a rocket missile from his knee at Bane. Bane dove away, but the blast caught him, and he began slipping down towards the water, barely catching himself, climbing back up, as Anakin called his saber back to his hand, running at Django, blocking blaster bolts. Anakin got to him, cut his gun in half, and spun to kill him, but Django used his jetpack to ram into Anakin's side, and send him slipping down the edge as well. Now Django flew back into the air, meeting Cad Bane once more in a fist fight. And as Anakin was climbing back up, Boba emerged in the Slave One ship, firing the cannons at Anakin. Anakin rolled away, then used the force to crush the gun, and the ship began to malfunction. Anakin threw his saber at the engines, and now the ship completely shut down and began falling down into the water. Anakin reached out, catching the ship, then yelled at Django to stand down or his partner dies. So Django paused, and Bane kicked him to the ground. Django's helmet flew off, and Django pleaded with Anakin to stop. His son was in the ship. Anakin said that this is what he deserves for killing Padme, and Django's eyes lit up. He said that he could bring them all to the person that paid him to do it. He's going to meet him on Geonosis today. They all go, kill him, and claim a huge profit from the Republic for stopping a war, and Anakin gets his revenge from this top of it all. Anakin agreed, wondering what Django was talking about. A war? And he strained hard, lifting Django's ship back up to the platform. Boba ran out, and Django told Cad and Anakin everything. He was paid by Dooku, and if they go now, they can stop a galactic war long in the making from ever getting started. And so, they would make the trip to Geonosis together in Django's ship, as Django told them everything. Long ago, he was hired to have his genetic template cloned, and on Kamino, an army for the Republic was built by the Sith. Whatever that meant. Anakin knew exactly what that meant, and now he saw the broader vision of it all. It was the Sith who had Padme killed, as the Sith wanted the Republic to have an army in order to create war and conflict in the galaxy, allowing the dark side to truly move in. Bane asked Django why they should trust him. Why take them to the person paying him? And Django said it was rather simple. Now that the army is built, he has become a loose end for these Sith. It's only a matter of time until they decide that Django and Boba need to be taken care of. So Django said he may as well kill them first. Keep the profit, stop a war. That was good enough for Bane and Skywalker. So as they entered the atmosphere for Geonosis, the three of them prepared for an infiltration. Anakin could feel his rage burning inside of him as they got closer. Maybe someday, he would kill Django for his role in all of this. But today, he would cut the head off of the snake. Bay entered in the secret hangar, and a battle droid escort came to meet them, to bring them to the meeting room. But the three of them ran out of the ship, quickly taking out the droids, then ran together towards the Geonosis war room. The halls were heavily guarded with Geonosian bugs, but they were no match for Skywalker, Bane, and Fett, as they moved through the halls with lethal abilities, then finally came upon the door. Bane placed charges on the door, and it exploded open. The three of them ran in, and began taking out everyone in the room. Django shot Newt Gunray and his Nemoidian friend, along with Poggle the Lesser. Bane took down San Hill and Shu Mai, while Anakin took out the rest, ending with Wat Tambor. And once everyone was dead, a speeder would land in the room, as Count Dooku himself got off and looked upon the destruction. All of his Separatist leaders, the people he spent years recruiting, were slain on the floor. Fett betrayed him, and Dooku saw Fett, Bane, and Skywalker standing above the bodies. Fett shrugged his shoulders, and said it was always going to be one of them going down, and he has had to look out for himself and Boba. Anakin was glaring at Dooku, the legendary fallen Jedi, now turned Sith, and Anakin ignited his lightsaber, telling Dooku that he will pay for killing Padme. Dooku gave Anakin a smile, saying that taking her life was a great joy for him, and he ignited his saber, saying that they will not stop what is to come. Anakin ran towards Dooku, fueled by his determination to avenge Padme and found himself outmatched by the sheer skill and experience of Dooku immediately. His lightsaber defense strained to keep up with the Count's perfect strikes, each blow threatening to end Anakin. But on the other side, Jango Fett fired a barrage of fire at Dooku, his dual pistols firing with accuracy, and Dooku deflected the incoming bolts, firing lightning at Anakin. But the constant assault kept him on the defensive, 
preventing him from focusing solely on Anakin. Cadbane would fly on the other side of the room, firing a barrage of small missiles, which Dooku managed to push away from him. Jango threw smoke grenades, and smoke filled the room, obscuring his vision, forcing Dooku to rely on his other senses. Bane darted in and out of the smoke, launching surprise attacks with his pistols and his flamethrower on his wrist. One of the blasts finally hit Dooku in the thigh, and Anakin ran back in. Now, lightsaber clashes were illuminating the smoke-filled air. Blaster bolts were streaking across the room. Despite Dooku's power, the combined efforts of Anakin, Jango, and Bane began to wear him down. These were perhaps the two best bounty hunters in the galaxy, and a Jedi that was young, but powerful. The Sith Apprentice found himself increasingly overwhelmed, unable to fend off this relentless assault, and with a perfect swing, Anakin finally managed to disarm Dooku, sending his lightsaber flying across the room. He fired more lightning at Anakin, but a cable caught across his wrists, and the lightning ended up firing into his own body. Dooku fell to the ground, and blaster bolts began to hit him all over his body, until Anakin moved in and stabbed him, killing Dooku with the rest of the Separatist leaders. When it was over, Anakin felt a bit of relief, but it was quickly replaced by guilt. Was this what Padme would have wanted? He never really stopped to consider it, but as he stood looking down at Dooku, Jango called him over. Anakin walked over to the data table, and Jango clicked a beeping button. From the table emerged plans for some sort of battle station, labeled DS-1 Battle Station. It was a planet killer, and Jango pointed something out. It was being secretly funded by the Republic from the office of the Chancellor. And now Anakin knew that this conspiracy went all the way to the top. On Coruscant, some time later, Palpatine was delivering an emergency address to the Senate. After the assassination of Padme Amidala, Palpatine was saying this Separatist threat has become far too real, and he is declaring war on the Separatists. Using his emergency powers, he will use a clone army from Kamino. The Separatists must be dealt with. But before he could continue, a new Senate pod began moving towards the center, with Anakin and Jango Fett on it. And Anakin would reveal everything, along with Jango, who was hoping to secure goodwill with the Republic and a huge profit in the end. Upon revealing that he took care of the Separatists, Anakin plugged in the Death Star data, revealing that Palpatine himself was one of the people throwing funds at the Separatists. Outrage rang out, and before long, Palpatine was being arrested for treason. He calmly said this was all fabricated and fake, that he will clear his name, but he was taken away into a prison. Around a day later, Palpatine was calmly sitting in a cell, waiting for his breakout team. He could get out of here himself, but he didn't want to reveal that he was a Sith quite yet. He would escape, take the Separatist army, and bring the Republic to its knees. Meanwhile, Cad Bane and Jango Fett both got a very, very large profit from the Republic for exposing this threat from the inside. But above his cell, in the vents, Anakin would place three assassin bugs, the same ones that were used to kill Padme, and then he would walk in front of Palpatine's cell. Anakin was going to distract him. Palpatine tried to put on the act of the fatherly figure, but Anakin didn't want to hear it. Instead, he was telling Palpatine that he would never win, making Palpatine angry, until the bug reached Palpatine's ankle and bit into him. He looked down, then back up to Anakin in fear. Anakin shrugged and snuck away as Palpatine fell to his knees. The venom was taking over, and he died quickly, the same way that Padme died. With the Separatist threat destroyed, Anakin would take a break from everything as the Republic was reorganizing itself. He would go back to Tatooine, and he would be with his mother. He would spend years meditating, finding peace, trying to apologize to Padme for how he acted after her death. It was not the Jedi way, but in the end, he was able to prevent a war. And after these few years, Anakin would have matured with the help from his mother, and he would return to the Jedi Order, completing his training under Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Windu. And in time, he would become a Jedi Knight, taking Ahsoka Tano as an apprentice, being the best Jedi that he can possibly be. And folks, that is where our story ends today. Um, I had to say, I saw this idea in the comments and thought, how could I do it? Just drop my phone, because I have done a video. What if Padme died during the Coruscant attack, you know, after the Clone Wars? So, I wanted to try it before the war even gets started. And I kind of wanted to do it like a detective story. I don't know, I've never really done something of that style, so... Just kind of Anakin going from planet to planet, person to person, getting closer and closer to the truth, and ultimately going from just wanting to, you know, take care of one assassin, 
to uncovering the entire plot of the Clone Wars, which I thought was fun, you know. The Death Star plans were on Geonosis and given to Dooku, so the Separatist leaders had them, and the Death Star was partly funded by the Republic, so I liked doing that. I thought it was a good way to get Palpatine out of the picture there without, you know, the Clone Wars. I thought it was just, just a nice change of pace. Um, as for Palpatine's death, I wanted to mirror Padme's death with Anakin using it. It's a bit psychopathic for Anakin, but he, he uh, places the bugs in the cell. The bugs get to Palpatine and kill him the same way Padme died at the beginning. Bit, bit uh, maybe not the Jedi way, but uh, Anakin goes on to Tatooine, beats with his mother for a while, figures himself out, and ultimately returns. Yeah, he did murder the Separatists um, and a lot of other people, including the Chancellor, you know, to get revenge, but... It was a fun story. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And, you know, Bane and Django featured them in the story. Shout out to all of the members of this channel. We'll be doing a stream with Penty after the Bad Batch episodes tomorrow. So appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next video.